Haley. Chapter 9 Ndi was trying her utmost to ignore the scout who was deliberately trying to make her life a living hell. Since the moment she'd become a blacksmith, he had been a nuisance. It had all started one morning, when she'd been bent over a gauntlet with Dylan, and the man had made some wisecrack. What are you two lovebirds whispering about? She'd instantly responded with, how to safely nail this rod through this hole. Dylan had blushed beet red, and the scarred man had laughed so hard he'd started wheezing. It had become a running joke which she then played along with until she teased back by wrapping the scrawny brunette in her arms and planted a fat kiss on his cheek. Kale had flown into a rage, and she hadn't seen Dylan for the next two days. After that, the scouts had been watching them every second. Well, whenever he wasn't training or out on a mission, in which case Damien had to threaten him to participate, which was so strange, because everyone else she asked about the man insisted that he was forever bored, they all said he hated being within the walls, and was practically chomping at the bit to get out any chance he could. She'd also learned that Dylan was the only real friend the man had. Her mother had always told her that no one was past saving, and he had tried, considering the circumstances. No doubt Kale should have been on meds that had run out by now, but he was simply insufferable. Over the last two months, their interactions had gone from sly innuendos to nasty jabs, which led to witty responses that later dissolved into a snarky banter, to friendly animosity, and all-out bloody tantrums, which left them in this odd sort of limbo. When the mood was good, the conversation came easily, the quips ever more so. But then the man would be triggered by something unfathomable, and he'd storm off, leaving the girl angry and confused. It was just weird. It had been better since she'd become involved with Marcus, and Dylan still seemed to only find her when Kale was out, and their meetings always ended before he got back. It made her feel like she was the other woman in an affair, but the tech had only laughed at the idea when she'd mentioned it. Kale dumped the corpse onto the table, usually reserved for mems from the mates, and Ndi gently placed the head beside it. It overflowed the trestle, which could usually hold three. Where to start on such a creature, she wondered. There was just so much of it. Never seen one this big before? The scout asked, a tilt in his tone that she had now come to recognize as the prelude to inviting himself to stay where he would be a nuisance. You aren't required to speak, she hummed in return turning to dig out a pair of gloves from a crate under the table. He overtly ignored the suggestion. Aw, why not? Because whatever you say will be irrelevant, she answered simply, and hushed irritably when her search produced nothing. She was in no mood to play today, not with a monster far more interesting in front of her. Is that any way to talk to the help? He clicked his tongue, but made no move to leave, which was surprising. Calling his supposed intelligence into question usually did the trick to get the man to bugger off. Ndi ran a hand down the flank of the creature, just to have something to do other than entertain the scout. Get out of my lab. She'd almost realized he would do no such thing, but her attention was drawn to what she'd found. Beneath the surface, Ndi felt three broken ribs, and the skin puffed up from where something had hemorrhaged inside. She reached for the nearest drawer, and her hand had slipped on the handle. Lovely, just lovely. The ooze from the body had made her fingers slippery. Would you like an assistant? Kale asked from just behind her, and she turned to find him leaning over her shoulder, so close she could smell the blood and sweat that had dried on his cheek. How coagulated is that blood on your hands? She asked, not backing down. It's pretty dry, if that's what you're asking. He smirked, as he reached around the girl to pull open the drawer for her. She cocked an expectant eyebrow at him, and he dutifully retrieved a pad and a pen. She would give him props for subtly telling her he could understand her science speak, and jerked her head towards the couch. He stepped back, but didn't take a seat. As long as he stayed on the other side of the table, it would be fine. The uneasy butterflies that had taken up residence in her stomach would settle eventually. 
Surface examination, she began, and he scribbled as she spoke. The specimen is approximately two and a half times the size of the MEMS previously examined and has almost four times as much muscle mass. Bigger than usual, the scout said aloud, pen scratching on paper. Be serious or get out, Indy sniffed at him curtly, not lifting her eyes from the cadaver. Three broken ribs from one overgrown toddler, really? Kale moved around to look, and she quickly stepped away to examine the head. I didn't think I hit it that hard. Yes, she confirmed, after she got over her shock that he had been the one to do so much damage. She shook her head as images flashed before her eyes of the day she'd met him and the others. Three larger canines, she continued. The fourth appears to be missing. <clears throat> Kale cleared his throat, almost embarrassedly, and tugged at the cord about his neck that all the scouts wore. Ah, there was her fourth too. She nodded and picked up the head to move along with it. They continued, circling the table until Kale inevitably grew bored with the monotony of it all. Do I bother you that much? he asked, a sincerity to know in his tone as he pointed the pen at her. Ndi cocked her head, but she deliberately did not look up from her work. You know you bother everyone, and you get off on it, so why bother asking? What if I promise to sit quietly and let you concentrate? The scout suggested, even though he made no motion to do such a thing. Out of the goodness of my heart. Funny, Ndi snorted feeling up her specimen's neck to where the spine had been severed. I distinctly remember you saying that you don't have one. Wanna check? Kale asked with a grin. You could lay me down on your table and examine me. Firstly, you're like half a decade older than me, so... Ew. Secondly, stop distracting me. She regretted the second line as soon as it was out of her mouth, hearing him draw breath with the comeback she herself would have used. She glanced up to glare at the smoke working its way onto the man's face. Don't, she ordered, cutting him off before he could speak. He let the breath go quickly, but the smoke didn't leave his face. To his credit, he didn't say anything as he glanced back down at the corpse and scribbled something down. That's odd, Kale spoke up sometime later. What is? Ndi asked exasperated despite being elbow deep in a monster memph torso. Even though the new and improved creature hadn't been as biologically different from the regulars that she'd hoped, the quiet game had been going so well. There's a bite mark in our big boy's shoulder. The scout seemed entranced. He had even put down his pad and lifted the shoulder off the table to examine it. It's a girl, Ndi corrected for the hell of it. Huh? He didn't even look up. This memph. It's a female, she elaborated, as she wiped her hands in an old rag. Whatever, he mumbled. You might want to take a look at this. It's different. Her game of avoid the scout had been getting sloppy anyway, and the curiosity always got the better of her. So Nindi rarely fought it anymore. Needless to say, she wasn't all that impressed by what she saw once Kale had made space for her to observe. It looks like a transformation bite to me, she drawled, but a firm hand between her shoulder blades kept her at eye level with the scar. No, look closer. Kale leaned down next to her and pointed at the tissue. It's too perfect. Come again, the girl frowned. What do you mean? Kale hovered his fingers over the teeth marks and drew it around in the ovalish pattern. This creature let the bite happen. You didn't fight it. There's no tearing, Ndi nodded, as she finally saw what he was talking about. Confusion and interest pushed her to peer even closer at the oddity. Exactly, Kale exclaimed, once she'd found the wording he'd been looking for to explain what he saw. That is so strange, Ndi murmured, her brain working a million theories at once, but unable to settle on the simple answer of, why? She pressed her fingers into the scar, and the wondering slowed as bumpy collagen pressed back against her fingertips. Why would it intentionally let something bite it? She asked herself. Maybe it's a love bite, Kale offered. Ndi's face deadpanned. You just had to go and make it weird, she scolded, 
forcefully standing up to knock the man's hand off of her. Hey, even monsters need sex, he returned on a chuckle, leaning away so she could shift out of her crouch beside the table. You talking from experience? She questioned with a raised eyebrow and a smirk. He had such a good comeback for that, but before he could get it out, she dropped her hands to her hips and was back to her inquiry. It's in such a strange place too, she said a little too dismissively for it to be a coincidence. He was almost certain she'd done it on purpose to snuff his flame, but he could roll with it. Not really, he clicked his tongue, stepped behind her and clawed his fingers to pinch lightly at the flesh of her shoulder. Like this. Except, she replied, all her focus on the anomaly at hand. Now that it had been pointed out, it was a wonder she had missed it at all. That bite is upside down. She turned out of his hold, still staring at what she could see of the bite. She took the man's elbows in her hands and shifted him so they could have a better view. He raised an eyebrow at her when she tugged his arms forcefully. You know, if you wanted me on my knees, are you going to help me or not? She glared at him and tugged more forcefully. He almost frowned, but seemed to make a decision as he let her guide him down. She nodded sternly before looking back at the mark and clawing her hand the way he had done. It would have had to happen more like this, she hummed digging her fingers into the meat of his shoulder. Yes. She patted his head absentmindedly as a smile slipped onto her face. Or the bite was hanging from the ceiling. Ndi stepped back to give the man space to get up, but he caught her wrist, and she could have sworn she felt the air in the room physically shift as he uncurled to tower above her. It happened so slowly, she could see every muscle move under the still blood-encrusted skin. Her lizard brain screamed, Predator. Time to run? They stared at each other. Ndi broke eye contact first. Could you please turn this over? She asked, with a tilt of her head towards the carcass. I want to check if it has any more marks. His gaze shifted past her to something over her shoulder. She released a breath she hadn't known she'd been holding. He caught her eyes again. Her breath halted. He looked like he wanted to say something other than the, yeah, sure, he finally settled on. The moment Kale let her go, Ndi jumped out of his way. It was only with that release of pressure that she realized just how hard the man had been holding onto her. And he'd been shaking. She felt like she'd just escaped something. Strange how almost every reaction she had to anything was measured by- Hold up! She gasped as the man was halfway to flipping the thing. There's something in its back. She reached beneath the creature and prodded until she felt the bump that had caught her eye. Too hard to be bone. Could you hand me a scalpel? Kale grunted and the corpse slumped slightly as he used one hand to pull a switchblade from his pocket. He shrugged when she glared at the blade, as though it had personally offended her. It's what I can reach at the moment, he huffed, hooking one hand under the beast's armpit to keep it from slipping. Get a move on, this thing is heavy. I forgot I wasn't working with Dylan, she grumbled, even as she snatched the blade and crawled back underneath the carcass. She yelped when the full weight of the thing crashed down on her. The blade pierced the skin, and half-coagulated blood oozed out right in front of her nose. It smelled god-awful. You know I do actually have a brain. Kale hissed darkly. I couldn't reach your damn scalpel. Kale! Ndi screeched as she struggled beneath the body. Shut your face hole and help me! Help yourself! The man spat venomously. Ndi growled and she could only imagine how he'd crossed his arms childishly. She finally managed to pull herself from below the corpse and took a deep breath to, one, calm her nose, and two, get the smell of rotting blood out of her nose. You didn't have to prove you're subject to gossip and rumors just like every other bastard in this godforsaken city, the scout shouted at her from across the table. No fear. Fear was bad. Slowly, she patted her hair. Typical. Every time I think you might be semi-helpful or decent, you go and prove that evolution can actually work in reverse. The mem's head flew across the table and hit the wall with a solid thunk. Great. Now she was going to have to determine anti and post -trauma. Listen here, coconut, Kale hissed, around the table faster than Nindy had predicted, and crowded up into her space. Her forced calm had made her brave. 
Stupidly so. If it weren't for this Neanderthal, you and your entire family would still be crawling around the outside. I almost died because you wanted to see Silas wet himself. She hurled back. Her calm shattered as she squared up to the man, her blood boiling at his next ill-brained conviction. I turned him into a hero. You turned him into a killer, she shouted. And the outbreak didn't do the same for you? He shoved her, but she'd been expecting it, and caught herself on her back foot. You are an outbreak, she screamed. A mentally unstable, childish, narcissistic pathogen. The words wouldn't stop. All the frustration that had been building up under their bullshit civility burst forth. You're a temporary necessity, and this plague won't last forever. She shoved him back, and he didn't move, but she didn't stop. Once people like me find a cure, we won't need people like you anymore. Kale didn't say anything. Ndi took a breath to say more, but the elevator doors opened, and Dylan barreled into the lab. I heard there was a... His excitement died out so quickly at the sight of them, it might have given him whiplash. Ndi huffed and turned back to her memph. Dylan, deal with him. She waved both of them off. She was done dealing with Kale and his mood swings. Kale didn't make a sound, but he did take a moment longer than he should have to move. Ndi didn't notice, but Dylan did. The man hadn't even seemed to notice that the girl had left his line of sight, until he did. Kale shook his head, a little too violently, before he turned on his heels and marched towards the exit bumping Dylan out of the way as he stormed off. The tech was at a loss, but he followed Kale regardless. Finally alone, Ndi picked up the head from where it had landed, but it slipped from her grasp, and it was only then that she realized just how sweaty her palms were. If she had let herself think about it, Dylan's appearance had probably saved her from being pummeled in the face. Something had shifted in Kale's eyes when he hadn't responded. She hadn't realized it in the moment, but now the memory sent a shiver down her spine. She wished the lab had heating and... Oh no. Ndi felt her heart drop into the pit of her stomach like a rock. He hadn't been cleared. 